Good morning and welcome to Oil for the Journey. My name is Sunny. I'm your journey reader for today. We are ending the book of 2 Chronicles chapters 35 and 36. We follow the bridges for peace, ignite the truth, Bible reading plan. The link is in the bio. Go on ahead and sign up. <laughs> um, I know that it will. <clears throat> It will impact your life for good. It's good to wait on the Lord and to trust in him. Um, sometimes, even when we read the story, sometimes you don't yet understand how it can apply or if it does apply. But just know that in your time of need, the more you ingest God's word, his Holy Spirit is there to remind you of that word, his word spoken, his word written in your time of need. So it's never in vain to take this time and purposefully just spend it in the word, just to know God in his word, not to, you know, exegete it or anything, you know, fancy or serious, excuse me, but just spending time in God's word. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. Father, gracious Father, we are so thankful for this day. We're thankful for you in our lives. We thank you for how you just love us, how you protect us, how you keep us, how you lead us, how you guide us, how you provide for us, God. You said you would never leave us nor forsake us, and you are true. So thank you for always keeping your promises, God. We love you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Chapter 35. Then Josiah announced that the Passover of the Lord would be celebrated in Jerusalem. And so the Passover lamb was slaughtered on the 14th day of the first month. Josiah assigned the priests to their duties and encouraged them in their work at the temple of the Lord. He issued this order to the Levites who were to teach all Israel and who had been to set apart to serve the Lord. Put the holy ark in the temple that was built by Solomon, son of David, the king of Israel. You no longer need to carry it back and forth on your shoulders. Now spend your time serving the Lord your God and his people Israel. Report for duty according to the family divisions of your ancestors, following the directions of King David of Israel and the directions of his son Solomon. Then stand in the sanctuary at the place appointed for your family division and help the families assigned to you as they bring their offerings to the temple. Slaughter the Passover lambs, purify yourselves, and prepare to help those who come. Follow all the directions that the Lord gave through Moses. Then Josiah provided 30,000 lambs and young goats for the people's Passover offerings, along with 3,000 cattle, all from the king's own flocks and herds. The king's officials also made willing contributions to the people, priests, and Levites. Hilkiah Zechariah and Jehiel, the administrators of God's temple, gave the priests 2,600 lambs and young goats and 300 cattle as Passover offerings. The Levite leaders, Konaniah and his brothers, Shemaiah and Nathaniel, as well as Hashabiah, Jael, and Josabad gave 5,000 lambs and young goats and 500 cattle to the Levites for their Passover offerings. When everything was ready for the Passover celebration, the, peace, the priests and the Levites took their places, organized by their divisions as the king had commanded. The Levites then slaughtered the Passover lambs and presented the blood to the priests who sprinkled the blood on the altar while the Levites prepared the animals. They divided the burnt offerings among the people and by their family groups so they could offer them to the Lord as prescribed in the book of Moses. They did the same with the cattle. Then they roasted the Passover lambs as prescribed. 
and they boiled the holy offerings in pots, kettles, and pans, and brought them out quickly so the people could eat them. Afterward, the Levites prepared Passover offerings for themselves and for the priests. The descendants of Aaron, because the priests had been busy from morning till night, offering the burnt offerings and the fat portions. The Levites took responsibility for all these preparations. The musicians, descendants of Asaph, were in their assigned places following the commands that had been given by David, Asaph, Heman, and Jedithun, the king's seer. The gatekeepers guarded the gates and did not need to leave their posts of duty, for their Passover offerings were prepared for them by their fellow Levites. The entire ceremony for the Lord's Passover was completed that day. All the burnt offerings were sacrificed on the altar of the Lord. And as King Josiah had commanded, all the Israelites pre present in Jerusalem celebrated Passover and the festival of unleavened bread for seven days. Never since the time of the prophet Samuel had there been such a Passover. None of the kings of Israel had ever kept a Passover as Josiah did, involving all the priests and Levites, all the people of Jerusalem, and people from all over Judah and Israel. This Passover was celebrated in the 18th year of Josiah's reign. After Josiah had finished restoring the temple, King, King Necho of Egypt led his army up from Egypt to do battle at Carchemish on the Euphrates River, and Josiah and his army marched out to fight him. But King Necho sent messengers to Josiah with this message. What do you want with me, King of Judah? I have no quarrel with you today. I am on my way to fight another nation, and God has told me to hurry. Do not interfere with God, who is with me, or he will destroy you. But Josiah refused to listen to Necho, to whom God had indeed spoken. And he would not turn back. Instead, he disguised himself and led his army into battle on the plain of Megiddo. But the enemy archers hit King Josiah with their arrows and wounded him. He cried out to his men, Take me from this battle, for I am badly wounded. So he lifted Josiah out of his chariot and placed him in another chariot. Then they brought him back to Jerusalem where he died. He was buried there in the royal cemetery and all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for him. The prophet Jeremiah composed funeral songs for Josiah and to this day choirs still sing these sad songs about his death. These songs of sorrow have become a tradition and are recorded in the book of Laments. The rest of the events of Josiah's reign and his acts of devotion carried out according to what was written in the law of the Lord. From beginning to end, all are recorded in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. Chapter 36 Then the people of the land took Josiah's son, Jehoshaphat, Jehoahaz, sorry, and made him the next king uh, in Jerusalem. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. Then he was deposed by the king of Egypt, who demanded that Judah pay 7,500 pounds of silver and 75 pounds of gold as tribute. The king of Egypt then installed Eliakim, the brother of Jehoahaz, as the next king of Judah and Jerusalem, and he changed Eliakim's name to Jehoiakim. Then Necho took Jehoahaz to Egypt as a prisoner. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 11 years. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. Then King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Jerusalem and captured it. And he bound Jehoiakim in bronze chains and led him away to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also took some of the treasures from the temple in, of the Lord, and he placed, placed them in his palace in Babylon. The rest of the events in Jehoiakim's reign, including all the evil things he did 
and everything found against him are recorded in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. Then his son, Jehoiachin, became the next king. Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem three months and ten days. Jehoiachin did what was evil in the Lord's sight. In the spring of the year, King Nebuchadnezzar took Jehoiachin to Babylon. Many treasures from the temple of the Lord were also taken to Babylon at that time. And Nebuchadnezzar installed Jehoiachin's uncle, Zedekiah, as the next king in Judah and Jerusalem. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem 11 years. But Zedekiah did what was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. And he refused to humble himself when the prophet Jeremiah spoke to him directly from the Lord. He also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, even though he had taken an oath of loyalty in God's name. Zedekiah was a hard and stubborn man, refusing to turn to the Lord, the God of Israel. Likewise, all the leaders of the priests and the people became more and more unfaithful. They followed all the pagan practices of the surrounding nations desecrating the temple of the Lord that had been consecrated in Jerusalem. The Lord, the God of their ancestors, repeatedly sent his prophets to warn them, for he had compassion on his people and his temple. But the people mocked these messengers of God and despised their words. They scoffed at the prophets until the Lord's anger could no longer be restrained and nothing could be done. So the Lord brought the king of Babylon against them. The Babylonians killed Judas, a young man, even chasing after them into the temple. They had no pity on the people, killing both young men and young women, the old and the infirm. God handed all of them over to Nebuchadnezzar. The king took home to Babylon all the articles, large and small, used in the temple of God and the treasures from both the Lord's temple and from the palace of the king and his officials. Then his army burned the temple of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, burned all the palaces, and completely destroyed everything of value. The few who survived were taken as exiles to Babylon, and they became servants to the king and his sons until the kingdom of Persia came to power. So the message of the Lord spoke through Jeremiah was fulfilled. The land finally enjoyed its Sabbath rest, lying desolate until the 70 years were fulfilled, just as the prophet had said. In the first year of King Cyrus of Persia, the Lord fulfilled the prophecy he had given through Jeremiah. He stirred the heart of Cyrus to put this proclamation in writing and send it throughout his kingdom. This is what King Cyrus of Persia said. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. He's appointed me to build him a temple at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Any of you who are his people may go there for this task. And may the Lord God be with you. <sighs> wow. As I sit here, um, I think about how God used King Nico of Egypt and King Cyrus of Persia in various um, moments. Uh, how he even, he knew King Nico, not to say, you know, he served Yahweh, <laughs> but he did declare that the Lord had spoken to him and he was assured about that. But Josiah, who did serve Yahweh, did not listen. <sighs> And even here, um, just the God warning the people of Israel over and over again, you know, to turn for them from their wicked ways, because He wanted to heal their land. But instead, the word of that He sent through His prophet Jeremiah and so many others did come true, and Israel ended up in exile. I think for myself, where am I? being stubborn, possibly. And where am I not obeying or submitting to what God is saying? Um, because, you know, I may be doing good or looking good and thinking, oh, I'm in right standing with God. This might sound like a hard thing, but it's actually the mercy and the grace of God. It was the mercy and the grace of God that kept 
telling the children of Israel over and over again to turn from their wicked ways. You know, my pastor preached earlier this week talking about, you know, mentioning how um, those besetting sins, right? And so, you know, that's, it sounds like a hard word, but it's an encouraging word. Because when when God speaks to us about those areas of our lives that might not be so clean or so pure, he is seeking to purify and to restore his children to him because it's all about relationship with him. That's all that really matters is truly in being in right standing with him. Yet we know the scriptures also tell us that our righteousness is not of ourselves. It is because of God. It is because of what Jesus did on the cross. And I think that's what the part of what the Passover celebration is. You know, the sacrifice, the one atoning sacrifice that was needed and that Jesus made for us all. So I encourage you, as I encourage myself, let us take time to sift through our hearts to really say okay God is there something I'm missing is there something I have missed and but that I can now respond to in repentance to you so I can do what you are telling me to do he is waiting there to hear you he is waiting there to restore you he is waiting there to hold you and to help you. Will you allow him to do that? Let us, brothers and sisters, let us do that today. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. For indeed, your word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. It illuminates not just the good things, but the things that are not so good, that need to be changed, God. So then we can um, allow you to remove those besetting sins from our lives so that we in, can be that bride without spot or blemish. God, I thank you that this is an encouraging word because it's all about bringing us closer to you or restoring us to you if our fellowship has been broken, God. There's nothing so, more, there's nothing more grand or more important or more beautiful than being in fellowship with you, God. We thank you, God, that you hear us, God, and that we can hear you and that we will respond accordingly, Father. I pray for my brothers and sisters who may be struggling, that they will be strengthened in the name of Jesus, that their hope the hope that you give, I thank you that it does not disappoint. And they will hold on to the hope that you give. That we are here um, today in this world. And any trials and afflictions uh, that we may be walking through, journeying through. That you are with us and you are helping us and that you have a plan, Father. And we praise you for this, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you all so much for reading with me today. I pray your day is blessed and filled with joy and hope. <laughs> God bless your day every day. If you want to connect with us, whether you want prayer or if you want to become a reader, please feel free to email us at oilforthejourney at gmail.com or hit us up in any one of our social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're here standing with you and walking with you. In Jesus' name, love you all. Bye-bye.